For this, we're going to have range units that fire instantaneously, that have the same range and cover no volume. Because if, if we um, if we play any of those problems, if we play any of those variables, our problem gets complicated beyond belief. So we'll have a population of region in one, and then we have a second population of region in two. Okay. And this population, um, after a single volley hits, after volley one, n1 will obviously deal n1 times d, where d is the amount of damage that you can do. Damage. And n2 will deal n2 damage. Now, the similarity stops here. Because let's assume for a while that N1 is microed perfectly and N2 is microed in the worst possible way. Okay? So, how many remember what perfect micro is? Alright, what's perfect micro? Exactly. You shoot the most number of weapons for a long period of time. So, that includes, um, so conversely, that means killing as much of N2 as possible while N2 is not killing N1 at all. So for reality's sake, let's say N N2's damage is being evenly spread out through all of N1, so not a single unit dies, but N1 fire, fires in such a way that it's concentrated on N2 units. So after each volley, we're going to have some number of deaths. So it's going to be, um, so let's N2, who suffered a uh, perfect micro, will have um, N2 minus N1 times D over um, HP. So we'll have, uh, so this is the number of units still alive, while over here at N1, <coughs> we still have N1 units alive. Because N2 had one well, worse off of my field, it didn't kill a thing. So you can see the difference starts to happen for volley 2. Again, we're using the same exact units, because with the same exact units, we have the least number of other factors like, oh, N1 won't, re won't reload in time, or let's suppose Dragoons have a longer range. So we won't deal with any of that and assume they're all in the same space. Okay? So N1, again, will deal N1 <coughs> times D damage, and N2, this time, will deal N2 <coughs> minus N1 times D divided by HP times D damage. So just in case we all need to get confused, N1 is going to be population 1. N2 is going to be population 2. Um, D is the amount of damage per Marine, or whatever you this. We're using Marines because they fire instantly. And um, HP is the HP per um, unit. So you can see this is what happens. And then, so obviously for um, after volley 2, N1 is still going to have N1 units. Well, so this time, N2 has N2 minus N1 times D divided by HP, minus again N1 um, times D divided by HP. Because, again, um, that this is how many units N1 has killed. So if we do this <laughs> after, um, after M volleys, we'll end up with the following. We'll have N, um, we'll have, out of population N1, N1 will all survive. And after N volleys, we'll have N1 times D times M. Okay? And out of N2, N2 minus uh, M times N1 over, times D over HP will be still alive. And how much damage? Well, if you do the summation, We'll have n1, um, n1, uh, n2, sorry, times m minus uh, the sum, the sum of m equals one uh, um, up to m, like uh, variables. From i equals one, it's just the sum of um, m, uh, sorry, i, i. N1 D over HP. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't know sums or never done them or don't remember, don't worry because I'm going to give you the results. So this is uh, this will end up to be uh, damage dealt equals N2 M minus um, I times okay sorry M times M plus one 
times N1 D over HP. I'm going to assume you guys know what HP is and erase some of this stuff so you don't get confused. D. So this is the amount of damage after M volume. Okay. This isn't uh, especially significant because um, because like the most imperfect micro possible is very difficult to achieve, and most perfect micro possible is also very difficult to achieve. So it won't be um, so so it won't be a real life application. However, the importance of this is that you can see um, see what order of growth you have. For instance, here we have n1 dm, okay, and the modification here is n2 m minus m m plus one n1 d over hp. This is of the order m squared. That is what's really important. So we, uh, we now have a calculation that shows that uh, with perfect micro, um, the amount, number of units that you uh, can preserve grow, grows, with, uh, grows with the number of volleys squared oh, times squared. Okay? We'll see in future calculations. I mean, you have no basis like, for comparison yet. We'll see in future calculations. We'll see some um, some things like macro. If you apply perfect macro, for instance, your your income will grow <coughs> to e to the x. For some other uh, things like keeping your army together, which we'll discuss later on today, um, will, your growth um, or change between most perfect and most imperfect will grow with um, it's called cosine, hyperbolic cosine of um, of a function. But the basic thing is you get to see the order at which uh, the difference between most perfect and least perfect micro is. However, you are all curious people, I'm sure, and you want to make this better, okay? So you, you're not satisfied with the fact that we can only calculate the difference between perfect <coughs> the only, We can only calculate it for, you know, discrete quantized, um, qu quantized volleys. So because there's got to be more to, uh, more to start after that. So um, we can use more generalizations to figure out, uh, figure out more. Um, do you guys want this up, or can I move this board up to make it easier to see? You guys want to see this still up? Yeah? Okay. So this is what's important. Just remember, it's of the second order. It's uh, dynamics, or how a population changes through time. So what we have here is we have, let's say, a population A and a population B. Okay. These are just any random population, a population of units, another second population of units. Now, what is the depth of A dependent on? Well, it depends on B, right? It depends on how much B fires. So we're going to assume that there exi exists some rate, alpha, at which A dies, but alpha, the death rate, is dependent on B. Conversely, beta times A is the rate at which A dies. Very, uh, very logical, right? This population of A is the rate at which it dies. The rate at which it dies is dependent on, on the second population. The second population, conversely, is dependent on the first population. So, <coughs> How much of A do we have left after time t? Well, um, A of t, uh, are you guys all familiar with this notation, A of t? So the, basically the population A as a function of t. So how much A is left after um, some time t? Equals A naught, which is the initial population, uh, minus the integral of alpha B dt, okay? Alpha B dt is simply how much of B is left. Uh, how much of B is left. Multiply the rate and multiply all by time. So if we have, let's say, population of B goes like this, let's say. Let's just assume that's how the population of B goes. Um, how much of A dies is just the area under B. Um, whereas most of you said you've been through calculus, so I'm assuming you know that. So after this, but um, what is B? Well, we can write B as a simpler um, Similar equation, b equals b naught minus integral of beta times a dt. So now that we have um, a formula for b, we 
can substitute it back into A. A sub A of T <coughs> is A naught minus of integral of alpha times B, alpha times B naught minus integral of beta times alpha. <coughs> and uh, this equals alpha A naught minus uh, um, integral of alpha B naught dt uh, plus integral of um, alpha beta A dt of second integral dt dt. Okay. Um, this equals A naught minus alpha B naught t plus second integral of alpha beta A dt dt. Okay. I sort of rushed to the derivation of that, but um, the more important thing is to listen to what's coming up next, which is why we need to know this. Okay? A naught. What is A naught? Guys, what is A naught? Initial population. Initial A, right? What is B naught? Initial B, right? So, if we weren't taking calculus or differential equations or anything into effect, all we have is this term, a minus alpha beta naught times t, which is essentially saying, what's your initial population? Multiply by, uh, subtract how much of b kills in, a, uh, in t time. So it's very simple. This is uh, essentially what we had before. Now the complicated thing is the second integral of alpha beta a, which is actually not just a, but a of t, dt dt, okay? So how do we solve this equation? Well, um, there's two ways. One is by series, if you're really good at series, and I'm sure none of you are. And the <laughs> second is by, um, by different equations, where it's actually possible, okay? Um, the actual derivation of this stretches for like three pages, so I'll just give you the easy answer. If any of you want to see the results, I can show them to you and explain it to you in person, but um, I mean, you're happy to, but you don't need to know for the purpose of this class. Yeah. <coughs> but what's more important, though, is to understand what these numbers all mean. The integral, the second integral here. Okay, so if this is simply <coughs> our linear, um, assuming no one dies, how much, um, how much population is left? Well, not no one dies, but B is not changed. Um, so what is this? Well, this then, would be the in, uh, this integral here would be the correction for how much of A did not die due to the fact that some parts of B died. So let's draw a picture to clarify that. This is A. And this is B. After time, um, after some time, this this much of A dies. How much is that? Well, that's going to be alpha b times t, right? However, while that is happening, part of b also died. So, how do we account for the fact that, you know, during the time that these guys were dying, they were not shooting, okay? Dead guys did not shoot. So, there must be some correction to this death count to make up the real a of t. And that amount is our is our integral of alpha, second integral of alpha beta of a of t dt dt. Okay, so that's what that's what's so important about this is this is um is the, all of this is like a scary formula. It's simply the correction on which the amount of this that did not die is firing on uh, is not firing on that anymore. And that's also why this is a plus sign and not a minus sign. So the answer is, let's call this integral C. <coughs> so C um, equals negative A naught plus uh, alpha B naught T plus one half A naught minus square root alpha over beta B naught e to the alpha beta t plus one half alpha minus alpha plus alpha over beta B naught e to the negative alpha beta t. Okay. It's actually a very elegant formula uh, equation, 
Um, it's just a little burden with um, constants. Yes. Was it was this in the this equation in the notes that you handed out? Um, this was not in the notes. Okay. It is in the green. Um, it is in the green readers though. If anybody has the green copy of the reader, um, then it's in the back. And so is the derivation for that matter. So I don't even memorize this, but we need we do need to <laughs> discuss where these variables go. Okay. So we can see that the correction depends a lot on um, alpha over beta. Okay, this rate is uh, it actually goes up. Alpha beta times t, square root of that, actually goes all uh, goes up um, as as the death rates for each side go up. So let's just um, bring some examples for now. Alpha over beta, where alpha is the death rate of a and beta is the death rate of b. So if alpha is much much greater than b, so for the case, so for the case that alpha um, is greater than b, beta, it means that beta, that, that population b, is killing population a at a rate much, much faster. Okay? So beta, b is killing a much faster, which means not much of b is dying. Okay, if not much of b is dying, then that means <coughs> that the correction is go not going to be very much. And I guess this term, actually for long periods of time, we can actually ignore the second term here. Because it's um, it's uh, to negative uh, alpha beta <coughs> t. Uh, and this is just um, zero for long periods of t. So we can ignore that. So the main form is right here. Okay. And so basically we have population b, this initial condition. Um, and so we have a comparison of these two initial conditions multiplied by how much of alpha is over beta. So how much more alpha is over beta multiplied by e to the alpha beta t. What this means is as time goes on, as time goes on, this effect is going to get greater and greater. If we have t approximately equal to zero, then we'll know, and then we'll see that the correction is virtually zero because, um, because this alpha, this, and this a, and this a cancel, this alpha beta, and this alpha beta together cancel out to be alpha beta t, okay? So essentially what happens is, um, for very short periods of time, this does not matter. For long periods of time, this matters more and more. In fact, to the exponent, okay? So uh, if you get nothing else out of this, uh, you, you get the fact that if you are expecting a long battle, then the fact that, um, so this is correction starts mattering a lot. You can predict how much of your army you expect to have left. Okay, let's take a different case. What if you, your population, your population A0, is much, much greater than B0? Well, if this is the case, then we go back to this equation, B0 minus beta A, and this will, be, will mean that the battle is over very quickly. So if your population is much, much greater, then the battle is going to be over before this E to the alpha beta T takes effect. So we see that this is not at all linear. This means that the longer battle starts, <coughs> the more um, the uh, the more the correction has to be. And for a short period of time, we can re we can actually just use for a short battle, we can actually use this equation and have it um, be fairly accurate. So um, these are things you can take into consideration when you're playing. You say, oh. This is going to be a long battle. It's going to be like um, like all my army against all their army, and it's going to take like 40 seconds. Uh, okay, uh, uh, talking about time scales, 40 seconds um, is actually quite a long time scale for this T. A short T might be something like one or three seconds. A medium T would be something like 10 to 20 seconds, and 40 seconds is a huge battle. Okay, so you can take that into consideration. If you know how long the battle is going to last you can see how important it is to have all of your army together. If all your army is together, then your A is going to be very big. A minus integral of alpha. <coughs> if, you have, if your A is very big, um, um, B minus beta, integral beta alpha, um, beta times A is going to be, um, it's going to reach zero very, very quickly. And so this T is going to be very small. T is going to be small. This term simply goes away. There's no correction. 
if you do a long battle, well, you've already been through this. So you see the point. So that is um, population dynamics in as few words as I can put it. Again, if you want the exact derivation and all the limitations, like which constants have to be <coughs> no greater than zero, and which and how to model in like reinforcements, how to model in um, storm, how to model in plague, uh, plague swarm lurkers, you should come speak to me about that because that makes this equation uh, tedious at best <laughs> and impossible at worst. So this is all great, right? I mean, yay, we can do math. Everyone loves math, but without. <laughs> <laughs> Without experimental results, there's no point in doing all this. So, let's see experimental verification of this. I'm going to see Wu. Wu! 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 Uh, let, let's not worry about how we get here because we're going to discuss build orders and timing and macro <coughs> in the future. But let's assume the situation happened. This is a population of Marines. This is a population of a second group of Marines. Okay? Just like our N1 and N2. It's very simplistic. I love it. Is this Boxer or is this? <laughs> this, this is, uh, I don't remember who this is. Okay. Then, oh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that these guys were our pros, and frankly, um, marine micro at this level is fairly simple and can be executed by most, um, almost anyone. Uh, which means that all that matters is whether or not these people are paying attention. So if you are paying attention to this battle, your micro will be good. If you're not paying attention, it's not. And again, remember that micro at this scale matters at the order of, um, of uh, <coughs> time squared. So you can decide whether or not you want to concentrate on this tactic or whether you want to concentrate on the economy, which is uh, exponent, for instance, which is uh, to the time exponent. <coughs> so here, we see these guys um, not firing, I mean, not engaging just yet. And, oh, um, almost, come on, let's go ahead. OK, so we see both sides executed a good micro. Both sides got a single full kill, and then um, so our volleys, um, our volleys are the same side. Um, and then we see that N equals I mean, N1 equals N2 have damage divided by hits. And then N1 also equals uh, uh, N2 also equals N1 have damage divided by HP. So right now, we see another <coughs> we, see a, a, we see a second volley, and this was not good enough micro because this guy did not die. However, this guy, did you guys see it? That um, the guy up there, the guy there, and the guy here all had uh, bullet shots on them but none of them died, okay? The, the kind of as kind of, this is a replay, we can't just go back and see it again, but the important thing is the damage from these guys was spread out through all those Marines, while the damage from those Marines on these guys were all concentrated on one guy, that one right here, <laughs> all right? So that is the important thing, you realize that um, when damage is focused, um, this happens. <coughs> Now, the thing is, like, what's, what's so important about a Marine? I mean, it's, it's a Marine, it's 50 minerals, come out another one, you know? But the important thing here is that for the next engagement, for the next volley, so to speak, in our calculations, this uh, <coughs> N1 will have you know, uh, five Marines times damage, while Teal will only have three Marines times damage. So that's the important thing here. Um, I mean, obviously, there's so many other uh, factors at stake. Like the fact that there's going to be a vulture out momentarily, and vultures make things out of these marines anyway. So, um, so don't get too hung up on the fact that guys lost the marine. But the important thing is, micro does matter in some cases. Okay. <laughs> so, and next we're going to see the importance of keeping your army together. This is um, the effect of your population dynamics. So let's assume, for instance, that population B was half of population A. Well, in that case, then population A will make mincemeat out of population B, and then, um, and then that, during that time, A will kill B so fast that B won't have time to kill any of A. <laughs> yeah, these guys, you all know. So we see here, this is a, a bot. 
I have my own notation. But in this, uh, i gets added every single time. So this uh, equals minus n1d over hp times sum of i equals 1 up to i equals m of i. And if you remember back to, I don't know what class, algebra 2, I guess, or something like that, uh, the sum of i equals 1 to m of i equals, oh crap, equals um, m times m plus 1 over 2, okay? And we plug this back into here for i, we have, um, we have this over 2. Um, sorry I made the mistake, but the important thing is, even with the 2 here, it's still of the second order. That's, uh, that's basically it. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yes? For your stuff like uh, shield regeneration or healing, uh -huh. uh, is it easier to factor that with each delt or as a separate constant factor at the end? Okay. How do we factor in dam uh, regeneration into all this? Well, <laughs> we have here, we simply denoted alpha as a death rate, right? But it can also be seen as the survival rate or replenishment or whatever. Or let's say we're fighting on a choke and the total amount of damage can only be so much. That also goes into alpha. So this constant right here, if you understand it completely, is very powerful in manipulating your equation. <laughs> What will happen is rate, rate of this population change is no longer um, just alpha b, okay? Let's take this in a very, very complicated fashion. What if we do shields? What if we do regeneration? This plus um, alpha, okay, uh, so in this case, we'll have to make alpha b negative because this is a population change. So we'll have dA dt equals this, because it's going down. Reinforcements come. Shields regenerate. Okay, let's say shields regenerate at some rate, right? At the regeneration rate, but only of the units that are still alive. Okay? Uh, what other factors can you guys think of? How about fighting at a choke? When fighting at a choke, um, absolute the value of um, negative alpha b has to be less than some amount, where some amount is um, limited by the number of units that are fighting at one time. We'll get into a little bit more of this later on when we do with flux. But you can see that careful, um, careful changing of this rate here, rate of change. Our simplistic model only cover deaths. If we covered any number of per, uh, any number of changes, re uh, reinforcements, regeneration, uh, or fighting a choke or whatever, we can manipulate that rate to reflect anything we want. Yes. Well, for most fights, is regeneration really feasible to include, or not feasible? Is it practical to include regeneration? No, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, if you, um, I can't, I can't just say not really, right? I have to show it somehow. I mean. Through many, 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 <laughs> through many, many games, you'll start realizing that the regeneration rate isn't effective. However, if you simply plug it into the calculation, you'll realize that R is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount compared to the damage dealt. So if, a, if R equals something like 1 one hundredth of alpha, then, um, then that's how it factors into the equation, okay? So, I mean, because like, let's say we have like Zerg regeneration, compared to like Zergling damage or something. This alpha is, I mean this R is literally going to be less than alpha over 100. Because Zerg regenerates I think one damage point every like two seconds or so. And Adrenaline, uh, Adrenaline like full upgrades does eight <coughs> times three damage per second. So that's something like 40 to 40, uh, eight, eight, 40, 48 to two. 48 to one actually, okay. So actually, uh, for zergling on zergling contact, we have R equals alpha over 48. If, um, if, if alpha was offset <coughs> by something like storm or lurker splash, then it's, it's an enormous number compared to R. So you're right in saying that, uh, in bringing that up, it's just that um, no one can say what the answer is going to be, but if they can show it, if they can prove it, then that becomes a good result. 
Of course, of course, if any of you want to dispute this, you can either show me a calculation or show me experiment. In this experiment, we see that regeneration was very, very effective. And we'll say, oh, let's modify this a little bit. Because calculations always follow experiments. Okay. Very good question. Anything else? In that case, we can deal with <coughs> concept of flux. Sorry, I'm throw throwing so much math at you guys right now, but um, I mean it's a really good way of modeling. And if you guys have better ways of modeling, like with computers, where we're like having two AI fight each other, go for it and send me the replays, or send me like a list of uh, a hundred. Um, like if you run the experiment a hundred times, it's great. Show me the results. But I believe that all calculations are an extremely valuable way of doing things. Yep. How would you model something like even more complicated like dragoons when they're kind of big and they don't have range upgrade? It's not possible to focus fire. Well, that's the thing. If you can experimentally measure an alpha, then you can um you can you can you can't calculate your alpha out. You can't. It's very difficult to calculate how much alpha will be based on damage and health and attack power or whatnot. But you can still measure experimentally. And that's going to be part of, actually, um, one of the homework questions is going to be how fast does an army die? Well, you can't really account for everything. I know that. Uh, you know that. You can't account for how well storm damages. You can't account for how well someone surrounds. But you can approximate it by running experiments 10, 15 times, watching, you know, 300 replays or whatnot. <laughs> so we're going to do a flux right now. We're going to define flux. We're going to define flux to be the total number of units that can attack at once, or the total number of units within the attacking range. Um, mathematically represented, <coughs> this is the integral of, you, of your um, yes, your damage. The integral of your damage as a function of the number of units you have, d a, uh, where a is the area from which they're firing. So let's say that, um, uh, let's say we have dragoons, <coughs> okay? These are all dragoons. I should probably use blue, huh? Because that would represent dragoons better. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's just, uh, that's, that's the dragoons I see. Suppose they're all coming in and firing at some target. This is the target, okay? The back dragoons won't even get to damage, won't even get to the fight until something happens, until these guys die and they move up, or until they get range upgraded and they fire, or whatever. These guys won't even get to fire until they get there. So these guys are not counted in the DA. Let's take another example, for instance. Um, let's say we're fighting at a choke. This is Luna, okay? There's our choke. Uh, let's see. There's three zealots. Yeah? <coughs> there's um there's a horde of Zergens right here. Okay? <laughs> That's a horde, okay? <laughs> and then this is the front line Zergens. <laughs> okay? That this is um a crude uh, description of three zealots holding choke, okay? So what do we have here in terms of flux? Well, this part of the Zergling army is doing nothing but milling around, running around, and being lost. This part is the part that's attacking. And this is what goes into integral of damage of all your units times area. So our flux can't be just that, because how will we normalize it? How will we compare it to anything else? So we divide it by the sum of all the damage of all your units. Okay, this is just a very general term. I mean, it's not very, um, again, it's, you can't use this directly in any of your calculations. But you know, this is basically the general form of things. We have the total amount of damage from the area that you can do compare it to all the damage you can do, period. Okay? So if all your units are attacking at once, you have 100% flux. If, if like, a third of your units are attacking at once, you have a third. Uh, your flux is 33%. And frankly, that's terrible. Okay? So how do we use this in practice? 
Okay, okay. So do you guys know, all right, who here thinks it's better to attack in a single file line heading straight for the army? I used to do that all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who thinks it's better to attack in a broad band all against the army at once? Yeah, now I think that. <laughs> So we have a, some. Uh, we have a model of um, this is your um, army and the uh, density is equal to lambda. Okay, the density of units along this arc is going to equal to lambda. This is your enemy. Well, uh, by the way, let's assume they have range. Okay, let's always assume these guys have range because um, because when we're dealing with surface area. Okay. How much flux do you have? Oh, uh, supposing that this um, this distance d is less than r, where r is a range. How much flux do you have? One. One. Hundred percent. Now let's see this. Okay. This is your army, and let's suppose this is your range. Okay. <laughs> How much flux do you have? Well, 50? I'd say that's like 15. 15? 0.15, you mean? 0.15, 15 percent. However, <coughs> what's, more, what's also important is to compare that to the uh, flux your opponents have. How much uh, flux do your opponents have? Okay, let's say that um, that's going to be like 80 percent. So obviously your opponents have more flux, they're going to do more damage. Oh, that's just a general case. Now we can prove it. <coughs> oh, by the way, this all, all these calculations are actually in your readers, on the grade versions at least. They're in the very back. Um, and they're, they're in the back here. And that's how they're different from the blue versions. <coughs> so let's assume here that we have your opponent army, your enemy army, right here. Okay. And then you are advancing like so. We're not going to advance in an arc because an arc is too hard to calculate. Let's just advance in a straight line, in, in, in a broad line, let's say. Okay. And let's, again, let's assume you all have the same range. Okay. So, in these calculations, um, how much flux do you have versus how much flux they have? Well, obviously, when you're far away. If you're right here, neither of you have any flux. So as you move closer, we can calculate how much your flux increases compared to how much their flux increases. So we'll have the following equation. So let's suppose V equals dx dt, where V is the rate um, at which you advance. So obviously, x will equal vt. Y, okay, and y here is how much of your army is going to be capable of firing. Y equals square root of 2R minus 2RX minus X squared. Uh, I don't really think you guys want to see the de derivation. Uh, if you guys want to see the derivation, again, see me after class or see me during lab or flip through your book. Okay. Essentially, what we have here is um, your enemy's your enemy's rate of flux increase. Increase d phi dt is going to be lambda v because it makes sense, right? As as you move more and more of your army into their range, they're going to have well lambda times v um, times v whatever v might be um, of their army attacking, and of course this divide by the total amount of army they have total. Your rate. Your rate of d phi dt is going to be <coughs> r minus x over uh, 2 r x minus x squared lambda v. <coughs> and it can be shown that this, well, of course, over its whole army again, this number is greater than this number for, um, for Okay, uh, this number is greater than this number until you get past the midway point. So, um, 
if your range, if your range is D, then everywhere until you get, um, so when your distance between them is um, D over 2, when the distance between your army and their army get to D over 2, that's when your rate of uh, flux increase starts decreasing compared to uh, his. But that's never going to happen because as you're fighting in a line like this, uh, as you're fighting a broad line like this, their frontmost guys are always going to be dying. So this distance over 2, you're never going to reach this D over 2. I mean, you might if they have like, you know, very buff units and you have weak units, but that's, again, um, subject to change, and you have to think of a better way to fight um, if you're fighting units that strong. So um, the point is, once you get, um, once your distance between you guys um, gets to D, um, D over 2, then your rate of flux will start decreasing compared to their rate of flux increase. However, um, their guys, their frontline guys are going to be done. Okay. Okay, you guys have done enough math today for today, so to the rest of the class, we're gonna be, there's going to be no math whatsoever. However, <laughs> before we take a break, though, if you guys could get, um, since this is the first time this class is offered, if you guys could um, give me like an assessment on like how, oh, so if you guys could get out a piece of paper and write down the following, one is um, where you see the class going. Where do you see the class going? And is it somewhere you want to see it go? Okay? First thing is uh, where you see the class where do you see the class going and where you want to see it go. Second thing is more theory? Theory. Or more calculations. And three. Um, I guess um, speaking lecture style. So like you can say like you know you walking around really distracts me and it hurts my eyes when you blink. Okay, <laughs> I'll just have to stop blinking. So so I want you to guys to comment on where you see the class is going and whether you like where it's going. Second is more theory and more calculations. And third is speaking lecture style. All right, um, the class will start again in 10 minutes, and uh, if you guys can have these things done by the end of that time, that'd be great. Yes, I guess. Units. And um, let's just keep it at that. Minerals, buildings, and units, because you can't really attack their energy. I mean, I guess you can EMP them, but that's, uh, that's minor compared to everything else. <coughs> so what? Do you hit out of all of these? Why, and why would you hit it? If you hit something like minerals and gas, and hit all like <laughs> uh, their economy, for instance, will it fight back? No. If you hit their buildings, will it fight back? No. no. All right. Turrets, I guess. Um, okay. But granted, like um, I guess you can count to, like turrets and cannons or whatnot in their. <coughs> but if you attack a supply depot, it won't hit you back. Okay. <laughs> How are their units? Will their units fight back? What? Yes? No? Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> so we have lots of units and some units. Okay? That's just a rough way of saying if their army is together or not together. But suppose you catch an isolated um, you know, 10 supply group with your army, of your, like, with your like 50 supply army. Doing the calculations we did before, will the, the sum army do anything to you? No. No, because the battle is so over so fast that you can kill them with, with very little damage to you. Whereas if you kill, <laughs> if you try to take on their entire army, all what happens? They'll um, they'll fight you, uh, they'll damage you, you'll damage them, and we'll go through all sorts of calculations. We find out you take damage. <laughs> so I think the um, the thing I want to impress on everyone right now is to is the importance of attacking what does not fight back. You have to attack what does not fight back. Why is that? Well, if you're attacking their economy, let's say you attack a nexus or a probe or a command center or a drone or whatnot, if you attack that, then um, you are reducing their 
um, their resource intake. They're reducing the rate at which they increase resources. If you attack their army, you're not reducing their rate of re resource uh, intake at all. If you attack their buildings, take out you know, eight supply depots or all not, you're reducing the rate at which they can build more units. So you're reducing the transformation resources. So the, basically the point is, you can get something for nothing. And why attack something that can hit you back when you can get something for nothing? I mean, obviously, under most cases, you won't be able to get a straight path to their supply depots or, or their pylons or overlords or whatnot. So you have to engage their army at some time. But even then, you don't have to attack their whole army at once. I mean, uh, if you can, um, since you have this great quote that if you outnumber him 10 to 1, attack him. If you um, outnumber him 5 to 1, strategize against him. If you outnumber him 2 to 1, um, build up your forces more. If you fight him 1 on 1, uh, you will lose. If you fight him two, uh, 1 on 2, then divide him. If you fight him 1 on 5, then defend. If you fight him 1 on 10, run away. <laughs> okay? Each of these, if you think about it, each of these is built around to fight where he cannot hit you. Because um, if you run away, you preserve your forces. He can't hit you, and you, if, I mean, if you fought, you deal minimal damage to them. If, if uh, you don't fight, he can't do any damage to you. If you defend against them, you take, you use your better terrain, you use your better micro, you use choke points or whatnot to make sure he does the least amount of damage possible. All the while, when you have your overwhelming advantage, you can fight him. So, uh, for um, like Tyler's Hydras, he just simply attacked him where <coughs> he wasn't. And when he drops those, I guess, 10 Hydras, 10, 12 Hydras, and like uh, 15 lanes or so in the Terran space, were they getting hit by anything? No. They were fighting something that could not fight back. Whereas, you saw exactly what happened when he used all of his army to engage the Terran army. What happened? Splash, splash, splash. You see dead hydras everywhere. Okay? So, uh, I mean, in a purely theoretical point of view, you should always attack something that does not fight back. However, that can't always be the case. <coughs> so if you can't uh, always fight what can't fight back, then you have to choose your battles correctly. I mean, we went through some of the calculations of, um, of how to choose your battles, because you always want to choose a battle that you can win. Um, Sun Tzu also said that um, it, um, a, a smart man will, um, will, will win his battle first and then go for the fight, whereas a losing army will fight first and then seek its victory. What basically he's saying is you have to make sure you're going to win before you have make the fight. So when you have everything scouted out, when you have your, um, your flank set up, and then you know you have the advantage, that's when you push it. Um, so like Tyler said, you take your advantage and you push it. If you don't have advantage, you just run away. Um, so I mean, we'll go, we'll go over this in more detail next time since we're kind of limited on time. But um, basically, the point of your army is to increase your economy while decreasing theirs, increase your production while decreasing theirs, and decrease their army while increasing your own. Um, take the position of battleground and, and you await your enemy at ease. One who takes position later at the battleground hastens to do battle is at labor. And thus one skilled at battle summons others, not summoned by them. In other words, fight where it's most advantage. So the final, I can't. <laughs> All right, there's the final equation. P vector plus your delta P as a result of your choices has to be greater than or equal to your opponent's uh, observed um, vector plus the uncertainty in what they might have plus the effect until the last time you saw them. So you have to